Hi everyone and welcome to our day eight exercise for audit of a day. Um, and today we're looking at audit opinion. So this is really the end part of our audit. Um, and I've got eight different scenarios here um, that were emailed out to everybody. But I just wanna quickly go over some basics um, of audits. So we start here with the unqualified opinion. The unqualified opinion is the one that everybody wants. That's when we think everything is true and fair, free from material misstatement under ASA 700. This little excerpt here comes out of ASA 705 uh, in the explanatory material. And it talks about, well, first we have to figure out is the report misstated or is there insufficient evidence? And then we look at two levels material but not pervasive, and material and pervasive. And then we've got different types of opinions in our options there. And then lastly, we can add an emphasis of matter to any of our unqualified, or potentially even any of these as well. So the emphasis of matter is when we want to bring shareholders' attention to something that um, is already in the audit report. So I'm going to do two per page here. Uh, so the first one, management wanted to reduce the allowance for doubtful debts by $5 million. Uh, the auditor did not agree and felt that it should stay at its current level. So clearly here, in this first instance, we have a disagreement with management. All right. um, and the key would be whether this is... It's definitely material. So you can assume that these are always with a material, but whether it would also be pervasive. Now, I would say that for one account, uh, we would not go with pervasive. So that means our audit opinion is going to be qualified. Oops. Okay. And uh, if we go back to that other table, I'm pretty sure that our qualified opinion comes out of ASA, whoops, let me change my pen here, 705, paragraph 7, and we've got a disagreement with management, so it's paragraph A. Our second one, the auditor was engaged to audit the client after the year end and could not observe inventory. All right, so here we have an issue in which we could not gather evidence no evidence on the existence of inventory. This is rare that we would actually take on a client after the end of the year, but we've got no evidence on the existence of inventory. So certainly we have insufficient evidence, and uh, but I wouldn't say that this was pervasive. This is just the existence. We could still calculate valuation, completeness, rights and obligations. So again... I'm going to go with qualified. All right. However, in this situation, um, it's because it's about limited evidence, I'm still going to go with ASA 705, paragraph 7, but subsection B, because subsection B is about having that limited evidence, insufficient evidence, or a scope limitation. So that's another word that you might also see sometimes. You might say a, see something about a limitation of scope. Um, so normally our audit is that we're collecting evidence on all of the assertions, but if we can't collect evidence on one assertion, then our scope is limited. Number three and number four, the entity is a defendant in a major court case relating to a faulty product that was not settled. So we know from subsequent events, obviously, there's going to be some form of contingent liability. So normally there's going to be some form of uh, need for contingent liability. But the question becomes then, is this information that needs to be disclosed? So does it need to be disclosed by the auditor? Um, and there's different arguments here. Management certainly, if management have made a disclosure, um, then I can highlight that in an emphasis of matter. So we've got a couple of different 
uh, options in terms of opinions. So if management have disclosed and if management has not disclosed, then I'm actually going to have different outcomes. Okay, so if management have disclosed, then my option is going to be to add an emphasis of matter to an unqualified opinion. With EOM. Okay. However, if management has not disclosed, then we need to think about the fact that we've got a disagreement with management and we could potentially go with unqualified in that instance. All right, so in terms of our opinions, obviously our unqualified opinion comes out of ASA 700 paragraph 16 and our emphasis of matter comes out of ASA 706 paragraph 8. All right, if it's qualified, then uh, if, because management have not disclosed, then we've got a disagreement with management and that's ASA 705 paragraph 7. Now, I didn't put this as uh, pervasive, um, but we don't know how big the litigation is. If the litigation was big enough to bankrupt the company, then this might actually be re replaced with adverse because of issues around ASA 570. So it's important to look when in regards to these ones into other ASAs as well. Okay, we're up to number four. Number four says, a fire at the company's office uh, because a faulty photocopier has destroyed all records of accounts receivable. So certainly here, this is insufficient evidence, right? which certainly does happen, but it's only around accounts receivable. So the sorts of questions I might need to ask include things like, how big is AR? Because one of the things will be size will help me determine what sort of opinion I've got. But generally, I think here we would probably go with qualified because of the limitation of scope. And that would be ASA 705 paragraph 7, but subsection B, because subsection B relates specifically to insufficient evidence. All right. And it's just the records around accounts receivable. We could do some other things like um, cash receipts test after the end of the financial year and use sales information to help recreate some of this. Okay, number five. The disclosure of director's benefits does not comply with the AASB. So you might think, oh, well, this is sort of, you know, a bit different to all of the others. When a disclosure does not comply, then we have an instance, we have a disagreement with management because we know that the AASBs require a particular disclosure, management are refusing. So this is just as significant as if management wouldn't change a number. So a failure to disclose is just as bad as incorrectly stating the financials. We know that... Uh, a failure to disclose here, it's only in one area around uh, director's benefits, so we would go qualified. Um, there is some question here about whether director's benefits would be significant enough to consider to be pervasive. They're definitely not big enough in terms of size to be pervasive, but I would still keep it there at qualified. So in terms of our opinion, 705, paragraph 7, and because it's a disagreement with management, subparagraph A. Okay, uh, let's go on to number 6. New competitor in the market has raised... Oh, all right, I've just fixed that so now we can see the whole question. Uh, raised serious concerns about the entity's ability to continue as a going concern. Now, this is where we need to go into 
the diagram inside ASA 570 in the uh, appendices uh, that shows the flow diagram. Okay, so we need to evaluate, certainly here, this creates a material uncertainty um, in regards to the company. It's raised serious concerns about their ability to remain as a going concern. At this point, we're going to assume the company is going to intend to operate. So the going concern assumption is valid. But the question becomes, in regards to our audit opinion, did management disclose about this? So if management have disclosed about this, then we have different options in terms of opinion. So if it was yes, then the opinion we're going to give them is unqualified, but with an emphasis of matter. All right, because they did do the right thing. They have disclosed. Okay, so they have disclosed there. Um, if not, if management don't disclose, then their failure to disclose is just like a regular disagreement with management. Um, if it has serious going concern issues, ASA 570 actually says you could go with qualified or, oops, I can't spell, you could go with adverse. And it depends on the seriousness of the situation. So you've got a couple of different options here. Um, and especially with this second option down here, the uh, no category, you have to ask yourself how bad is the going concern problem? Um, and you need to go back to ASA 570 as well. So in terms of our uh, standards here, unqualified obviously is 700 paragraph 16. The emphasis of matter comes out of ASA 706, and I, I think I've got the paragraph in a previous slide. Uh, when it comes to if management didn't disclose, then we also have to look at ASA 570 paragraph 23, which says, oops, let me redo that three. That's not a very good three. Two, three. Um, in ASA 570, it's important to look at that one because that'll give us some clear advice about which of these options to go for, um, as well as obviously picking um, the regular ASA 705, 7A. So, you know, you have both of these um, references in there because they both apply to support your uh, decision there. Last set, number seven, directors refused the auditor access to three months worth of the meeting minutes because they contained discussion about a highly confidential matter. Now this is a, real, uh, this, this is a bit crazy because auditors sign a confidentiality agreement. So my first thing would be to say, well, hang on a second, we signed a confidentiality agreement. You can give us access to this information because that's part of our professional ethical responsibilities, part of our job um, as being an auditor. So the fact that they've refused to give us access means that we have a limitation in scope. All right, because we can't get sufficient appropriate evidence. Okay, now if this was something really serious that could potentially bankrupt the company, then you might want to go down the disclaimer of opinion option. Um, it's sort of, you know, a it becomes a question of severity. So if the issue could render the client insolvent, um, then you're going to need to consider giving the disclaimer as the opinion type there um, because it's that serious. And the uh, disclaimer comes in under ASA 705 paragraphs 9 through to 10. Um, if we thought it was so serious that the company is going to collapse, 
Um, potentially otherwise, if we didn't think, so material but not pervasive, then we would probably go down the lines of a qualified. Okay, and uh, in terms of our reference for that, um, our qualified one is going to be ASA 705, which we've looked at a number of times before. Paragraph 7 for qualifieds, but subparagraph B there. Okay, lucky last. The company changed its method of depreciation from straight line to reducing balance, necessitating a restatement of previous year's statements. So my key question here is always going to be, why did we change? All right, if it's a change that reflects accounting policy, uh, the way that an asset is used, because that's the key for depreciation, we need to pick the method in which is most appropriate for asset use, then if the change is because the asset is used in a different way, then the change is okay. It's, it's actually not an issue and we don't need to do anything. So in terms of why the change, we've got two options here. Change in the use of the asset, which in that instance would be everything was okay and we could actually go with an unqualified. All right. Oops. Okay. But what if it's simply a profit-seeking measure? All right, it's earnings manipulation. And nothing has changed. Well, then they've changed accounting policy choice, even though we don't think it's appropriate. So that's going to be a disagreement with management, leading us to go down the lines of a qualified opinion. So the key here is going to be why there was the change. Was it because the asset is being used differently? Or is it because they're manipulating the earnings and they're trying to you know, maybe flip-flop between uh, depreciation methods to give themselves more profit? So if it's the first one, then we're going to go under ASA 700. Uh, let me figure out what paragraph it was. Paragraph 16. Otherwise, oh, hang on, that's not a very good six. 16. Otherwise, if there's intentional mis, uh, manipulation, we've got a disagreement with management, which is going to be ASA 705, paragraph 7A. So that is our uh, summary there um, of the opinions and how we would make our disclosures of them. Uh, make sure that you always use paragraph reference as specific as possible. Uh, certainly use lots of detail in your explanations as well.